Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. Today, due to popular demand, we're going to continue with our series of Turbo Talk content. In previous episodes, we've hit on a few different areas regarding turbochargers, functionality, components, these types of things. We've had a lot of feedback requesting kind of a general overview of turbochargers and their components and operation. So that's what we're going to bring you today. Okay, so probably the first thing, why turbocharge or what is a turbocharger? Turbocharger is power adding device, right? So trying to increase the amount of output from an otherwise naturally aspirated engine. If you want to make more power with an engine, you've got to get more fuel into the engine. Fuel being both diesel or gasoline as well as oxygen. You can't really increase one without the other because then you'll throw off an air fuel ratio, you'll be burning lean or rich, smoking, detonation, whatever the situation is. In order to make more power from the same size engine, put more fuel into it, air or specifically oxygen being one of those components of the fuel. Instead of using um, atmospheric pressure or what we call naturally aspirated engines to draw air in, now we're using a turbocharger and we're creating boost which is pressure above atmospheric pressure to force feed additional air or really oxygen to the engine so we can combine more fuel with that, more gasoline or more diesel with that air and burn more fuel, create more power. Fundamentally, that's why we turbocharge. That's what the turbocharger is doing. Specifically, how does a turbocharger accomplish that is by utilizing the waste energy from the engine both by way of the flow of exhaust gases as well as the expansive energy contained within the hot exhaust gas. There's exhaust gas flowing out of the engine. We use that to drive a turbine as well as the fact that that hot exhaust gas has a tendency to want to expand and as it expands it also drives the turbine turbine is connected to a compressor wheel on a common shaft and that is how we draw the air in and boost it or charge it into the engine. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at what we call the five major components, turbine housing, turbine wheel, bearing housing, compressor wheel, compressor housing. We're going to look at them each individually, talk about their contributions to the greater good, and what we know about them. So we're going to start with the turbine housing. This is the first component connected to the engine and the first component in line with the flow of exhaust gas coming out of the engine. Turbine housing mounts to the exhaust manifold and this is specifically the passage where that exhaust gas is entering the turbocharger or turbine housing. We call this area of the turbine housing the foot. This is where it mounts to the exhaust manifold and this is where exhaust gas is first introduced to the turbocharger. This is a dual volute or a split foot T6 in size. There are also what we call open throat turbine housings. So divided throat, divided foot is better at utilizing the pulse energy from the individual cylinder combustion events and an effort to drive or power the turbine. Open throat we generally see on applications where they might run a steady RPM and there is no uh, throttle response concern, transient response, those types of things. So uh, generally on-road divided throat, off-road industrial open throat. You can, you can kind of see as the exhaust gas enters and passes through the turbine housing, the area inside the housing becomes more and more restrictive, tightening up the volume of passage and increasing the velocity at which the gas from the engine 
must pass through the turbine housing. Common term in the industry is what is the AR of your turbine housing? AR stands for area over radius and it's a mathematical equation that engineers use to express the flow or restrictiveness of this housing. The lower the AR, the tighter the housing, the more restrictive to the flow of exhaust and the harder it will drive your turbine wheel. If you want to spool your turbo sooner, put a tighter AR housing on it and it'll come to life. It'll take away the lag, uh, but you'll also potentially get into an overspeed situation. This area is known as the bearing housing pocket and that's the mating surface for the bearing housing to seal up and seat against. This is discharge outlet, so this is where the exhaust system from the vehicle or machine would connect to, run out through a muffler, exhaust pipe, what have you. Obviously subject to a great amount of heat, uh, almost always cast iron, sometimes we see stainless, um, but almost everything out there, cast iron turbine housing. Okay, we followed exhaust gas from the engine, out the manifold, into the foot, through the turbine housing, and we've seen it tighten up and become more and more restrictive and we've seen the exhaust gas speed up in velocity. The next component in line is the turbine wheel. Generally the head of the wheel is made from Inconel which is a metal alloy that has good abilities to withstand and live in high heat situations, high speed situations. Generally the shaft is steel and they're fusion welded at the hub together so Inconel, steel, fusion welded. This particular area on the head of the turbine wheel we refer to as the tip. This is specifically where the exhaust gas leaving the engine operates on. So we watched it come through here and speed up and it's directed by the turbine housing directly at the tip of the turbine wheel. This exhaust gas operates on the tip and drives the turbine, spins the turbine wheel. Turbine wheel uses a common shaft on which we mount the compressor wheel. So now we're driving the turbine which is linked to the compressor wheel and now we're drawing air in from the atmosphere pulling it through the compressor housing and feeding it to the engine. A couple more common terms you may hear out in the industry inducer and exducer. And so the inducer is the diameter of the wheel where the gas or air is first induced and the exducer is where it exits. So on the turbine wheel the inducer is the tip, also the major diameter, the larger diameter, and the exducer is the smaller side where the exhaust gas exits the turbine wheel. We flip that on the compressor wheel. The inducer is the minor diameter. This is where air is first introduced to the compressor wheel. The exducer is the major diameter, so the back of the compressor wheel where it exits the compressor wheel. Sometimes important to clarify that because generally the market talks in compressor wheel inducer and engineers or the manufacturers talk in major diameter. So you hear of a S478, the market is talking about the inducer. When we try and translate that to engineering or to manufacturers, they want to talk about the major diameters. So they want the biggest diameter of either wheel when they are identifying them. All right, compressor housing. So generally aluminum, not subject to nearly as high of temperatures as the turbine housing. Um, we do see compound applications where they are cast iron, uh, but most applications, single stage, cast aluminum compressor cover. Again, this is the pocket where the bearing housing mates up to the compressor cover. Compressor inlet, so filtered air being drawn into the turbocharger, processed by the compressor wheel, out the compressor discharge, 
either through an intercooler system or directly into the engine. Compressor housings also use a mathematical number to express the sizing and the flow characteristics. Alright, final component, bearing housing. So the bearing housing contains the shaft and wheel, the bearings inside of it, the compressor wheel. You can see this is the pilot for the turbine housing to mount to. This is the pilot for the compressor housing to mount to. This is where the lubrication happens. So engine oil pressure fed in through this passage, fed to, in this situation, journal bearings, two journal bearings, one on each end of the shaft, thrust bearing setup, and then after passing through the restriction within the bearings, falls out, gravity drain, back to the sump. Another term you might hear out there is cartridge or CHRA. CHRA stands for Center Housing Rotating Assembly and is going to look like this. So it is the meat and potatoes of the turbocharger. Turbine wheel, bearing housing, bearing setup, compressor wheel. So if your turbocharger did not suffer a catastrophic failure, you can salvage your end housings, service and repair your turbocharger with the purchase and installation of a cartridge. So if your failure was more catastrophic or you're not comfortable in reusing your housings, then you'd be in a situation where you would purchase a complete turbocharger, end housing to end housing, everything in between. Alright, so old school cutaway here to kind of show everything together working in unison. So turbine housing on this side, hot exhaust gas leaving the engine, passing through the housing, operating on the tip of the turbine wheel. You can see it choking it down and pointing it directly at the tip, driving the turbine wheel, and then exiting out into the exhaust system. Compressor side, we can see as we're rotating the turbine, this is the inducer drawing air in through the filtration system and into the compressor housing exiting out into either charge air cooler or to the engine. This is the bearing housing here. Cut away we can see journal bearings where the oil is fed and then gravity draining out the bottom of the bearing housing. Alright, so that's it. Turbocharger 101 crash course from 10,000 feet. These are some of the hot spots, some of the common topics, common words you'll hear out in the industry. Certainly didn't cover everything and we definitely boiled it down into hopefully layman's terms and try and translate this into something you guys can understand. There is a significant amount of uh, engineering and science that goes into these components and these systems and we did not even begin to scratch the surface there so we're hoping just to bring kind of a basic operation and understanding to you alright so if you need help with your turbocharger or if you need service work or components replacement units all of the above please reach out to us you can contact us at 800-637 2658. You can email us at parts at areadiesel.com. You can log on to our website at areadieselservice.com. You can chat with us instantly through the button in the bottom right hand corner of our website where you will have immediate access to a diesel expert. All right, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching.